I like this one. I recently saw someone say Carb Quick isn't keto because it has wheat products. Okay. Our opinion on that is if you're staying under 20 grams of net carbs, you're in ketosis pretty much by default. Anyone saying it's not keto is making a definitive statement where really just do your thing. In my opinion, anything is keto as long as it fits into your daily macros. And we're gonna get a lot of people who are comment, kind of comment below about, we don't do if it fits into your macros or like you're doing it wrong and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, this is literally like how we live our keto life. How I categorize it in my mind is there's kind of two categories. There's ketosis and there's optimal health. So like, for example, Oscar Mayer lunch meat is, <laughs> is fine for keto. If you're shooting for optimal health, not fine. Diet, diet pop. If you're shooting for being in ketosis, for most people, totally fine. Optimal health, not fine. I would put carb quick in that same category. If you're shooting for being in ketosis, you can eat it. If you want to stay away from wheat, you want to stay away from soy, don't eat it. Uh, substitute, like as aspartame, I was going to say as part of my... <laughs> Bring that back. So that's how I like to think of it. There's two categories. If you're under 20 carbs, it's fine for keto. And there was another question also. I'll just roll it in real quick. He's heard to steer clear from artichokes. Is it okay to eat artichokes on a keto diet? Absolutely, it's okay. Um, it fits in similarly. Same thing. It's not the highest carb vegetable. It's not the lowest. But if it fits, it fits. We have a spinach artichoke dip recipe. That's incredible. So I think a lot of this stems from the people that make like Pinterest pins or graphics that are shared across the internet. And what they're doing is saying like keto approved foods and not keto approved foods. Right. So when you see that, you'll see like grains not approved. And to some people that means grains are totally off limits. But what that graphic is trying to say is for the most part, grains like traditional bread, you can't fit that into a keto diet generally. They're not factoring in like these new concoctions of low carb breads and stuff like that. They're just trying to make it simple for a, a quick glance, bread, no. Like that's what it is. Yeah. And people translate that to everything like carb quick and say that's not good for keto. And if you're opposed to it, good for you. Do what works best for you. And that's the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Do what works for you. Don't try to impose your beliefs on others. What helps inspire you to both keep on this way of eating and what helps you inspire, what inspires you to keep creating recipes? Also, do you miss rice? So no, I don't miss rice. I was never a big rice eater to begin with. Like even when I went to Chipotle, I never got rice in my bowls. I got like, I love beans. So I would get the beans. I love like baguettes. So I miss baguettes. What inspires us to keep going this route? What so recipes from, so like I'm, I don't want to like take this away from you. Matt comes up with the crazy fun recipes. Like, True. you know, just out of the box, like, Blue Buffalo I Monster. Storm, I, I sit on the computer all day like editing videos and stuff, then I storm into the kitchen and create something. I'm gonna make like, a sock filled with soy sauce exactly. and cat. <laughs> like, it's just crazy and I'm like, do it up. And it's always great. But for me, um, just like feeding off of other people, thinking about like what I love and miss eating and like, you know, thinking back to like what I used to eat pre-keto, I just, I take from what I know and that's generally like how inspiration comes, right? Yeah, what really inspires me, I think, is creating recipes that y'all love, like the chicken crust pizza, our right. keto bread, like stuff like that. Every time we're making a recipe, we're like thinking what can be similar right. to that. Cause like hundreds, maybe thousands of people have made the chicken crust now and it's like, it's awesome to create something like that. Yeah, what inspires us to keep going? Um, It's not so much inspiration as it is just like, I know, what certain foods do to my body, how they make me feel. Like I know myself well enough to the point where I don't see myself going back. Who knows if that day will come, you know? Maybe I'll have a family one day and I'll, I'll start to incorporate more carbs. But right now I just, I love where I'm at and I wanna keep it going. Uh, also I miss cereal. Is there a process behind making your recipes? Originally, no, we kind of just got in the kitchen. We'd have like fun nights where we would just make whatever we wanted and then do the research behind it and create it for you guys. But now there's a lot that goes into it in terms of, you know, making recipes that we know are going to be appealable to you and making like them doable, right? Yeah. We don't want to like make this really difficult 10 ingredient recipe and put it out there and expect you guys to do it. So we want ease, convenience, and... Yeah, there's so many things we don't make because it's too involved. Right, and then trying it. So like, I'll go into the kitchen, I know I'm gonna make it like two, at least two times. So I try it the first time, we taste it, is it worth it? Like, what is it, what do you say? Recipe a recipe and a half. 
If Matt doesn't say it's a recipe and a half, we don't even put it out there. Yeah. Uh, That's another, his keto approved stamp. Uh, we also, we're really good, I think, at adapting non-keto recipes. That's a big thing. Like we can, any dessert really, we can look at and make keto, yeah. non-keto to keto. Do you guys think that having a better understanding of cooking techniques is important to the cooking process? I did not have an idea of how to utilize keto ingredients like almond flour, coconut flour, peanut flour, oat fiber, like so extremely different compared to non-keto flours. Mm -hmm. So at that point, like I was like, oh no, it's not important, you figure it out on the way. But now that I understand how they all work together and like the ratios of, you know, using this much and this much will equal like a totally different product. I think it's so important because then I'm not making 10 batches of the same thing and just throwing everything out. And that's, and that is strictly speaking for us as food bloggers, as people putting out recipes for you guys to try and taste and enjoy with your families. But if you just want to start cooking, you don't need to know the technique. Just get in there and do it. But also knowing traditional techniques, like actual, we're not, we're not like trained at all. We're just people making recipes oh, yeah. in our kitchen. Um, I we literally definitely... just had hard boiled eggs. <laughs> I was really bad at that. We definitely uh, acknowledge, like we're learn constantly learning. Yeah. Like we got the the really a really good cookbook, The Food Lab. Kenji is awesome. Super awesome. I mean, constantly learning and trying to get better with actual cooking techniques is you can't just ignore what's proven to work. Are there any keto cookbooks you would recommend? We are working on one. Ours. Yeah, but, but it's personally, not I always say this: is don't look for a keto cookbook. Look for a cookbook. Yeah, I agree. That's smart. The internet has recipes. We can go to RSI. You can go to. Anyone who's made a cookbook, you can go to their website and find most of the recipes. Um, I would just get like, like the two cookbooks we have are Cook Science and The Food Lab. They're both like just scientific, like, you know, like internal temperature of chicken, like that type of stuff. Yeah. That's what you really need a book for, I feel like. You don't need it for recipes. But some people like a hard copy. Yeah. I mean, get our cookbook when it comes out. Is it important to exercise while on keto? It's just as important to exercise well on keto as it is not on keto. Exactly. We like to incorporate it at least four to five times a week in a gym, but we're moving otherwise, right? Like we go out on a daily basis. Like yeah. we don't like to be I feel terrible sedentary. when I don't exercise. And maybe if you guys haven't exercised in a long time. It'd be hard to get started. It'd be hard to get started, but also you might not know what you're missing out on. Yeah. Like when I go to the gym every time, it sucks for the most part. Like sometimes I'll find my groove and I'll really be like pushing and I just want to stay there all night. But for the most part, it's a chore. Like I don't like going to the gym that much, but I know it's worth it. I know it makes me feel better. I know the hour put in at the gym pays off so much more and I'll get more done the rest of the day. Right. I'll sleep like a baby. Oh. I'll wake up the next day and just be totally refreshed. It's so worth it. And it helps us stay on track too. Like. Now, you know, we're not gonna just eat all the snacks we just got. We're gonna make That's a salad it. or we're gonna make a full meal. So is exercising absolutely necessary? I'm gonna say yes, just because I think it's necessary. But like, do you have to do it? No, no. because you're an adult and make your own decisions. But it's definitely worth considering. It's necessary to life. So reading this question, he kind of seems to be asking like, I'm getting towards my goal weight. I don't wanna be tracking calories the rest of my life. How do I maintain? I seem like I gain weight when I'm not tracking. And in my experience, it's really hard to gain weight if you're not going over 20 grams of carbs mm -hmm. a day. Assuming you don't have any other like metabolic issues, I find it hard to gain weight. Like now I'm starting to add in a little workout carbs, like just a, uh, 10 grams or so to try to gain muscle, but it's really hard. Like yeah. being on a keto diet is tough to gain weight in the form of muscle or fat. We don't like eat a different dinner every single night, every single day of the year, right? Like. Our meals are like pretty solid in terms of what we're eating, so we know yeah. what we're eating in terms we of our We eat the macros. same things. Yeah, and like that's just like how we like to do it. And if you're meal prepping, it's a lot easier because you know you're eating the same meals, the same macros. So there's a lot of other tricks you can implement if you don't want to track, like just meal prep, right? We never see fat, then why you started. So we've answered this one before. We have a video on why we started the keto diet, but basically you're we've not overweight. Why did you start a keto diet? Keto is super popular for weight loss, but biohacking community, mm -hmm. I'm pretty like into that type of stuff. It's also very prominent. Basically for cognitive function is one main reason. Just general energy is why we do it. This brings up a good point because Although it is wonderful for weight loss, it didn't originate like in the 1920s when it originated, it was used for epilepsy for younger children. And then slowly it was um, incorporated into adults with epilepsy. And then slowly it just became 
where it is right now you know weight loss isn't the only purpose yeah like matt said there's cognitive function there's heightened energy like we know how carbs and glucose make us feel we know the insulin you know yeah. the spike in your sugar um what that does like fatigue muscle ache like there's so much that goes on behind the scenes like within our body we don't consider when we're eating cheetos you know um, i like that one I'm pretty dedicated to keto, but every now and then I have a cookie or a scoop of ice cream. Normal cookies, normal ice cream. Keep it under 50 grams. Is that what she said? Mm -hmm. She keeps it under 50 grams. How much is that going to impact? Am I doing keto? Blah, 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 that type of stuff. People kind of ask this all the time. Another way to phrase this question I hear is like, I'm doing keto. I'm cooking for my husband too. He has all my keto foods, but he also has rice and like normal carbs, right? And my opinion on that is any amount of lower, like lowering your carbs at all is a plus. Like if you're going from the standard American 400 grams a day down to like 100, that's great. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in ketosis all the time to just marginally better your health. And to lose weight. The fact that her husband is eating all the fat, like healthy fats, he's going to just then start eating less carbs. And eventually his calories will also go down. There's, <laughs> this, there's a huge paranoia about being in ketosis. And it doesn't need to be like that, in my opinion. Like, just live your life. Shoot for under 20 grams of carbs a day. If you don't do it every day, not a huge deal. Right. Like for the most part, you want to be dedicated up front at the start to get fat adapted. But I mean, the living your everyday paranoid of the foods you're eating, that's not a healthy way to be either. You want to just have a diet you can stick to long term. If a uh, cookie every now and then or, you know, a refeed day is helping you maintain, then that's probably what works for you. And like we said in the beginning, do what works for you. Free food. What? Free, food. free food, yeah. What would your one free food be? Mine would probably be pizza. And you, but you, it's only- Jar of peanut butter from Costco, big jar. No, you, no, we're going <laughs> normal jar. It's really tough for me to say, you know the gallon sized tubs of goldfish. I love those. Yeah, the gallon sized tub. I always had those in my house. That's what I would do. It's so I miss goldfish. Just keep swimming.